Your textbook starts out this chapter with a very descriptive picture. Children love to move because it's fun. Adults choose to engage in physical activity because they find them enjoyable. This paints a bright future for those of you entering the profession. However, it's not a perfectly painted picture. Most people may have indicated that they understand the value of physical activity, but many have not yet begun the process. It will become your job to challenge the populations you work with to not only talk the talk, but to walk the walk. Let's look at the dynamic fields of physical education, exercise science, and sport. But let's preface our discussion by reminding ourselves that the human body was built for movement. Look at the skeleton. You will see that it's a series of joints, or what we technically call articulations. It is these joints that allow for the free movement you experience when you engage in physical activity. Physical education is defined as the process through which an individual obtains optimal physical, mental, and social skills and fitness through physical activity. The term you see a lot of around here at Valley City State University is the term kinesiology. This is the more scientific term used to describe physical education. It's an umbrella term that encompasses many different fields. The term itself simply means the study of human movement. You can see why this has become a common name for departments that house programs like physical education and exercise science. Exercise science is another broad term. Our textbook decide, describes this as the scientific analysis of the human body in motion. And finally, sport is a broad term that deals with the application of components of the social sciences of history, management, philosophy, psychology, and sociology in a sport context. It includes how each of these impacts those that participate in sport. What does the term quality of life mean to you? This is a question that does not have a specific answer, as it depends on the individual who is answering. For those of us in this profession, it almost always involves some aspect of wellness and fitness. People across the globe are committed to fitness, and it has become an integral part of many individuals' lives. Think about this for a minute. When a new corporation is looking at Valley City to put down their roots, they almost always schedule a tour of the Wellness Center. Why is this? Well, quite simply, it's because they feel having a fitness type of center will help them attract quality employees. Fitness is very important as we grow older. And it is imperative for you to remember that senior citizens are a growing percentage of the American population. They have health needs, they have fitness needs, and they have recreational needs. We need professionals in the field that can match activities to their capabilities. And on the, on the other hand, we have America's children. This population also has wellness and fitness needs. Do you know that the dilemma of our times is the current childhood obesity crisis that we are facing? As a professional entering this field, you will play a major role in counteracting this crisis. So why is physical activity so important? I'm sure that every student in this class understands the value of physical activity. But do you know when we started seeing why it's so important? The year was 1996, and the first ever Surgeon General reported on the physical activity and health of Americans. The results were troubling. 15% of, of adults and 50% of those in the 12 to 21 years of age category engaged in vigorous activity at least three times a week for 20 minutes. 22% of adults engage in sustained physical activity at least five times a week for 30 minutes. 25% of adults and 25% of those 12 to 21 engaged in no physical activity. And the daily attendance in high school physical education classes between the years of 1991 and 1995 declined from 42 to 25%. Just looking at the last stat should tell you the handwriting was on the wall. Healthy People 2010 was published in 2000, and it continued to report disturbing statistics. Millions of people were overweight and inactive, and suffering from the results of their unhealthy lifestyles. We are now in the decade of Healthy People 2020. Healthy People 2020 presents a very ambitious but yet achievable 10-year agenda. The overarching goals of Healthy People 220 focus on the following. Attain high quality, 
longer lives free of preventable disease, disability, injury, and premature death. Achieve health equity, eliminate disparities, and improve the health of all groups. Create social and physical environments that promote good health for all and promote quality of life, healthy development, and healthy behaviors across all life stages. Let's look at a short video that gives us an overview from Healthy People 2020 and determinants of health. As you watch this, please remember that physical activity is only one aspect that determines our overall health. Determinants of Health, a framework for reaching Healthy People 2020 goals. What makes some people healthy and others unhealthy? How can we create a society in which everyone has a chance to live long, healthy lives? These are just a couple of the important questions that Healthy People 2020 explores. The range of personal, social, economic, and environmental factors that influence health status are known as determinants of health. Determinants of health include biological and genetic makeup, individual behavior, social interactions and norms, the physical environment, and access to health services. For example, stress, discrimination, education, housing, and unemployment are all determinants of health. Healthy People 2020 places new emphasis on the social determinants of health while continuing to address the full range of determinants. Health starts in our homes, schools, and communities. Meet Carla, a six-year-old African-American girl. Carla lives in an urban area. She doesn't have any parks or playgrounds close to her apartment building, so she does not get enough daily physical activity. Carla takes the bus to school and back. Carla's grandmother stays with her after school. Carla typically watches four hours of TV a day. Carla's apartment building is old and in need of repair, exposing her to mold and lead dust. Now, picture an intervention that can change Carla's determinants of health. The school board and the local health department work together to keep the gym at Carla's school open later on weekdays and on days when the school is closed for vacation. This provides community members with a safe space to exercise and play for free. Now, Carla's grandmother meets her at the gym after school. Carla's physical activity level increases as she spends more time playing with friends at the gym and walking around the track with her grandmother. She is spending her after school hours at the gym, which means she's watching less TV and has less exposure to mold and lead dust. Let's look at another example. Meet James, a 76 year old Caucasian man. James can no longer drive and relies on public transportation to get around. He lives in a low income neighborhood surrounded by convenience stores and fast food restaurants. James has to take the bus to get to the closest grocery store. Diabetes runs in his family, and James was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. What type of intervention may benefit James? How about a subsidized farmer's market within walking distance to James' apartment? The city health department and a statewide farmer's organization create a local farmer's market program in James' community. The program is subsidized by the city, which allows farmers to sell fruits and vegetables at a lower cost. The farmer's market program targets high-density, low-income neighborhoods like James. Now, James walks to the farmer's market each week, increasing his physical activity level. He's eating more fruits and vegetables now that he can afford them. James is also eating less canned food high in sodium. James' new diet and increased physical activity are helping to keep his blood sugar under control. Public health interventions typically target one or more determinants of health through information, policies, and programs. Each intervention is designed to produce a specific health outcome or outcomes. Outcomes could include positive behavior change, reduction in diseases, conditions, and their risk factors, fewer injuries, improved well-being and health-related quality of life, and increased health equity and reduced health disparities. This is at the core of the Healthy People 2020 framework. Every intervention has a life cycle of its own, a continual process of improvement made up of four phases, assessment, monitoring, evaluation, and dissemination. 
Through this cycle, an intervention can be refined for greater effectiveness. Healthy People 2020 places renewed emphasis on determinants of health, health equity, and healthy development throughout all stages of life. By addressing determinants of health and promoting health equity and healthy development across the lifespan, Healthy People 2020 provides a framework for a society in which all people can be healthy, both now and for generations to come. For more information, go to www.healthypeople.gov. Please take a close look at box 1.1 in your textbook to read more about the basis for Healthy People 2020. In the next section, we will look at the obesity crisis in America and guidelines that are put into place to address safe physical activity.